Hello, internet friends. This is a Commodore 64, a real one, right? See all the, all the ports on it? Okay, so you take this and you take something like this. This is a SD2 IEC 1541 disk drive emulator. It's a fake disk drive, basically, that you can connect to a real Commodore 64. Now, I'm going to show you what happens when you save to this, alright? Okay, let me get the microphone down here. Alright, so, let's say you're on your Commodore 64 and you type in a little program. You know, your typical, hello there. You run it. Okay, there's your program. You want to save it. So you type save my program well, hey okay there it is you saved it to a disk well to a fake disk right now you turn off your computer immediately and you turn it back on and you type to get a directory type the dollar sign thing you don't want to talk about and my program look at that boom it's still there ain't that cool now that is on a real Commodore 64 using the fake SD2 IEC 1541 disk drive now let's move on to the other example okay so right here we have a fake Commodore 64 computer well it's kind of fake the insides are fake it's a Raspberry Pi Zero running BMC 64 which is a fantastic emulator by the way uh, so as you see the, the only other thing real about this is it's got a real video port monitor port on it and it's got the uh, real power and power switch and, and one joystick port on it uh, out of that reset switch okay so now let me show you an example of saving on this alright next clip Alright, so the really cool thing about having a setup like this is that you don't need an external storage device because it's like built in right, to the SD card in the Raspberry Pi that you can take out and swap out, right? So let's write this program. Uh, hello there. Once again. Alright, list it. Now, all right. First, you got to go and attach a disk drive, and attach this. Okay. Now we'll save that. Well, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's do this. No, let's go ahead. We'll save it. Okay. My program. Well. Can't type, all right. Now let's load the directory. Okay, there it is, right. Now let's just turn the machine off. Now let's turn it back on. Now we've got to atta attach the disk again, which is no big deal. Uh, there. Okay, now get the directory. It's not there. Our program's not there. Ain't that terrible? Okay, so what you have to do. <laughs> Alright, let's type in the program again. New print hello there. And uh, yeah, list, yeah. Now save my program. Okay, now let's get a directory. Now it's there, right? Now if we shut the computer off or reset it, it's going to lose it again. So how do you keep it in there? This is how. Go back to the uh, BMC64 menu and go detach disk. Now turn it off. 
Now back on. Get our disc again. Take our directory, and boom, there it is. So the point is this: is that uh, yeah, you can save programs on the VMC64, but you've got to detach the disk before you shut down the computer. That's not too big of a deal, all right. It that's uh. I would prefer it though if it would go ahead and flush the disk buffers or whatever it's doing immediately. You know, that would be better because that's just one more step, right? If you got to detach the disk before you shut off the computer, then that's just one more. That's whining, isn't it? Yeah, it is whining. <laughs> But uh, that kind of that, that kind of takes you out of the experience, in my opinion. So, and something else, it'd be cool if you could just uh, well, it remember that that disc is attached. No, it doesn't. It it defaults to uh, to a different disk. It defaults to the default disk or whatever. So my two complaints, okay. Now I love BMC sixty four, okay, but my my only two complaints is is that after you do any kind of disk access then it should go ahead and flush the buffers immediately and also when you save the settings it should remember the uh, the last disk that you had attached to it that would be fantastic is that ever going to get put in there probably not but if those were in there, then this would be a more complete Commodore 64 experience, in my opinion. Anyway, alright. That's enough of this rant. Talk to you later. For more content, you can visit www.scottyanimation.com. There's a lot more stuff on there.